So today we're actually going to be looking at the topic of fractions. We're going to be doing adding, subtracting, fractions. Um, so we're going to use some techniques and shortcuts to explain and show our steps. So on the topic of fractions, um, we're going to look at this first question. So again, I'm going to kind of explain um, some of the instructions you get with some of these questions so you can kind of recognize the specific um, that they're, they're kind of looking for. So if we're looking at this question, write in lowest terms, and we've got 9 over 10 plus 4 over 15. And I'm going to write it down the board um, because ideally that's what we want to do as opposed to going across. So when we're adding and subtracting fractions, this is the trickier um, part of, of working with fractions. When we come on to multiplying and dividing shortly, um, that's a little bit easier. Okay, so there's one sort of less step that we need to consider. So when we're adding and subtracting, it's very similar, um, except we're just going to add or subtract the numerators as applicable. So if we have this question, 9 over 10 plus 4 over 15, I want to add these together um, and then I want to write the answer in lowest terms. So again, that's something that we use with fractions um, because we always want to have it in the simplest and lowest way. So with this question, what we've got to do is find the lowest common denominator. So you'll, you'll see that written out, lowest common denominator. And all that means really, long term, <laughs> that we abbreviate to LCD, is that we're just looking at the, the bottom number of the fraction. So the top number of a fraction is what we call the numerator, and the bottom number is the denominator. So it's just the denominator that we're looking at here for the first step, where we want to find the lowest common denominator of these two fractions. So we're going to identify here that we're looking at 10 and 15, and we're kind of looking at those multiples. So, you know, just to, just to kind of explain that, if I'm looking at the 10, I'm doing the multiples of 10. So 10 times one, 10 times two, 10 times three, and so on. Okay, and then likewise with the 15, I'm gonna look at the multiples of 15, 15, 30, 45, and so on. Okay, now the key thing is that we want to find the number where um, they join, you know, um, initially here. So. 30 um, is the lowest common denominator here. Now we can use you know, multiples of that 60, 90, but we will actually want to choose the lowest one because then it gives, you know, allows us less work that we need to do. So what we want to do now, once we've identified that 30, is we want to rewrite the fractions as what we call equivalent fractions. So we have a denominator now, common denominator of 30, and we have to rewrite these fractions so they have the same value. So the way we look at that, we're going to look at 10. We know that if we multiply 10 by 3, that gives us a 30. So we have to do exactly the same now to the numerator. So 9 times 3 is going to give me 27. And so now this fraction is identical to 9 over 10. Um, and you can check that on the calculator. So any fraction, so if you do 9 divided by 10 on the calculator, that will give you 0 0.9. And the equivalent fraction that we've just worked out, if you divide that on the, the calculator, 27 divided by 30, it should give you 0 0.9 if, if we've done it correctly. Okay, so, you know, that's kind of why we do that. It seems strange why we do that kind of procedure for adding and subtracting fractions, but that's the reason why. We have exactly the same value represented now, but we have a common denominator. So with the second fraction now, we know that if we multiply 15 by two, that gives us a 30. So we also have to do four times two, and that will give us eight. So we now know that four over 15 is the same as eight over 30. Okay, we've got the same denominator, so we know our answer will have exactly that same denominator. Okay, we're not adding the denominators, that, that's just going to give us um, a denominator of 30 here. But what we are going to do is add the numerators. So we've got 27. Okay, so 27 plus 8 is going to give us um, 35. 
So now we've got an answer of 35 over 30, okay? But the key thing here is that we want to write it in lowest terms, okay? We don't want to leave that answer um, because we can see that both the numerator and denominator, actually we can divide them by um, the highest factor we can see here, five. Okay, so we can divide 35 by five. That gives us seven. 30 divided by five um, is going to give us six. So now we've actually written our answer, and I always kind of like to um, highlight my answer, seven over six. Now this is what we call an improper fraction. And basically it's fine to leave the answer like that, unless you were given you know, particular instructions to write the number in a certain way. So as an improper fraction, it's perfectly fine for you to, to leave that answer there, seven over six. If we actually wanted to write it as a mixed number, so again, this is something that we use terminology in, in with fractions, is we want to write a whole number and then a proper fraction. So the way to look at this is, you know, there's different ways that you can do this, is we've got seven over six. So basically how many sixes go into seven? Well, that goes once and we know that our answer always has the same denominator of six. So, you know, the easiest way to remember this is then we're going to do one times six gives us the six. We've got a seven in the numerator, so we're just going to subtract the six from the seven. So we've got a remainder of one. So if we wanted to leave the answer, or if you want to write the answer as a mixed number, one and one over six. But certainly an improper fraction, it would be my, my kind of preference. So that's kind of an introduction as to how we add fractions here. Okay, um, the other point just to note is when we're working with fractions, we don't want to work with decimals, again, unless we're specifically told to do so. So we don't really want to give our answer. Again, we can check what this is using a calculator. Um, I just have a scientific calculator here. Um, so if we know that one divided by six, that's going to give us 0 0.1666 recurring. We've got one whole. So. 1.1666 okay and mathematically we might write that 1.16 and we might put a dot or a little line above the six to indicate that it's going to be repeating to infinity we don't actually want to write our answer as a decimal unless we were told specifically to do that okay so question two we're going to have a look at and we're just going to introduce this kind of element of uh, mixed numbers now okay so we're going to add together these two fractions which are both mixed numbers five and three quarters plus three and a half again i'm just going to kind of work down the page so there's actually two ways that we could do this question okay both if we're adding or subtracting now my preference would be to change this the mixed numbers into improper fractions so that's kind of the standard that i would suggest you know and that's what i would kind of use um, because when you come into doing um, subtraction it um, gets tricky if the first fraction is smaller than the second fraction so there's some different considerations there so first thing as soon as you see a mixed number with fractions always change it to an improper fraction that just really helps longer term. So um, to change the five and three over four into an improper fraction, we're just gonna use the whole number five times denominator, five times four is 20. 20 plus three gives us 23 for the numerator and the denominator stays the same. Okay, likewise for three and a half, three times two gives us six plus one, gives us a new numerator of seven and the denominator stays the same. Okay, same as we did previously now, we've got two, as it happens, two improper fractions and now we're gonna find the lowest common denominator of them and we're gonna identify that we've got a four and a two, do the multiples of each, the first time that they match is gonna be at four. So we know that we need to have a common denominator of four here and then we have to write the numerator accordingly. So the first fraction is uh, done for us. 
and so we've got 23 over 4. And the second fraction, we know that when we do 2 times 2, that gives us a denominator of 4. So likewise, we're going to do it with the 7. 7 times 2 is going to give us 14 here. Okay, then we've got the same denominator. We can just add the two numerators. So that's going to give me 57, uh, 37, sorry. Okay, so it's good. It's easy to make a mistake, so don't do that. Uh, So 37 over 4. And again, I'd be, um, you know, we've got an improper fraction here. So I'm just going to remind us about that. Now, what I might do with this particular question, unless we had special instructions, then obviously they would take precedence. But I would then rewrite this improper fraction as a mixed number, just so that it matches the, um, you know, type of numbers that it gives us originally in the question. So. Again, you can use the calculator to help you do this. You know, you can do it with mental math as well. So any fraction, we know 37 if we divide it by four on the calculator. Okay, I'm just gonna do that. So we get 9.25, okay? So when we do this, we're not interested in the decimal, we just want to use the whole number. So we know the whole number here is gonna be nine, and we just have to work out now, we know the denominator is the same, so it's going to be over 4. We just need to work out what the numerator is so that we can write it as a mixed number. So we know 9 times 4 is going to give us 36. We've got 37, so we can just subtract the 36 from 37, so we get 1 remaining here. So ideally, we want to give our answer as 9 and 1 fourth, 9 and 1 over 4 for that question. Okay, um, now there is an alternative method. I'm just going to switch up the colour here. So either for adding or subtracting, you can actually split the whole number with the fraction. So if we had the same question, we're still adding these two fractions, what we could do is split these, split these up. So the whole number, we've got 5 plus 3, so we know that gives us a whole number of 8. And then if we look at the fractions separately, three over four plus a half, okay. So now we can just add those two fractions separately. We've got a whole number of eight, but now we're just gonna look at the fractions and adding those together. So again, we're gonna identify that we need to have a common denominator of four for each fraction. We can just put in the first fraction. We know we're multiplying two by two to give us four. So we need to do one times two, gives us two here for that numerator. Same denominator, add the numerators, that will give us five over four. So now remember, we've got our eight as our whole number, and now we're gonna add that to five over four, okay, with this uh, fraction here. Now this is an improper fraction, so it means that actually we can change that into a mixed number. Five over four, how many fours go into five? Well, that's one. One times four, four, so we've got five. Subtract, so we have a remainder of one, and the denominator stays the same. So basically, we can change that into our mixed number here, and then we can add these two together um, so that we get our, our final mixed number. Eight plus one is gonna give us nine as a whole number, and then we've got a quarter here. So now we've got our solution, 9 and 1 over 4. Okay, so, you know, you can see that, you know, that's another important aspect in math is that there's often lots or different methods that you can use um, to do, you know, a question. Um, and sometimes we don't always see what maybe is the quickest method. We might just use something that we feel most comfortable with. So, you know, definitely use what you feel confident using. But there is that option with adding. And, and subtracting fractions. But I would highly recommend that you always, when we have mixed numbers in the question, that we just change those to improper fractions and follow through and then give our answer as um, the simple, you know, as the mixed number at the end, um, as opposed to the second method I mentioned about splitting it up. 
Okay, so that's adding fractions. Um, subtracting is um, very similar. Okay, so we're just going to have a look at another question here. So we want to write our answer in lowest terms. So we've got five and three quarters, subtract three and a half. Okay, so I've just used the previous question, but now instead of adding, I'm just going to subtract. Okay, so again, we've got mixed numbers, change them to improper fractions, ideally. Five times four is 20, 20 plus three, is 23, the denominator stays the same as 4. Now we're subtracting the second fraction, 3 times 2 gives us 6, plus 1 gives us 7 over, and the denominator stays the same. Okay, we've already done this in the sense that we know that the lowest common denominator is 4, so we know our first fraction is the same, and we're going to change the second fraction, so it's going to have the same denominator 4, we know 2 times 2 gives us 4, so 7 times 4, uh, sorry, 7 times 2 is going to give us 14. Okay, so now we know our answer has the same denominator of 4, and we're just going to subtract the numerators. So 23 subtract four, 14 is going to give us 9 over 4. Again, because our question we had two mixed numbers, um, it, it's sensible, you know, to, to write then the answer in the same format as a mixed number. So we have nine over four. Okay, again, you can use the calculator if you want, but we know how many fours go into nine. Well, that's two, so our whole number is two. And two times four, so we know our denominator is still four, is gonna give us eight. And then we can subtract that from the numerator nine. Nine subtract eight is gonna give us a remainder of one. So we've got two and, and a quarter for our answer, written as a mixed number. So that's subtracting, okay? Just the, the numerators we just subtract instead of add, depending on the operation. Um, again, sometimes you'll see that kind of word operations. That just means are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Okay, so that's kind of adding and subtracting with fractions, which are, is the trickier kind of um, aspect to fractions. And there's just a few questions for you to try on your own. So I'll just write these out. And then the answer I'll just write next to it and circle that. So please try these yourself. If you need extra help, please reach out to me using the links provided in the description below. Also check out the other videos in the series. Thanks for watching.